Welcome to a lesson on solving one-step equations by adding and subtracting. Let's first talk about the solution of an equation. Any replacement or any value of a variable that makes an equation true is called a solution to an equation. So x equals 3 is a solution to x plus 4 equals 7 because if we substitute or replace this x with 3, it satisfies this equation, which means 3 plus 4 equals 7 is true, therefore x equals 3 is a solution. And x equals 8 is a solution to x minus 3 equals 5, because if we substitute or replace this x with 8, it satisfies this equation or makes this equation true. Here we'd have 8 minus 3 equals 5, which is true. To solve an equation means to find all of its solutions. And since solving equations is such a large part of algebra, let's take a look at these two questions. We're given the equation x equals 18 equals 33. We want to know is x equals 41 a solution? Which means if we replace this x with 41, would it satisfy this equation? So is 41 minus 18 equal to 33? If it is, then 41 is a solution. If it's not, then it's not. So let's perform this subtraction and see. So we have to borrow from the 3. So we have 11 minus 8, that's 3. And 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So the left side of this equation would be 23, and the right side is 33, which obviously aren't equal to each other. So this answer is no, x equals 41 is not a solution to this equation. In the next example, we have x plus 27 equals 51. We want to know if x equals 24 is a solution. So we'll substitute 24 for x and see if it satisfies this equation. So we'll have 24 plus 27 equals 51. Well, 24 plus 27, we'd have 11 carry the 1, we'd have 51. And since 51 is equal to 51, the answer is yes, x equals 24 is a solution. Before we take a look at solving our own equations, let's talk about principles of equality. For any real number, if a equals b, then a plus c must equal b plus c. Meaning if we know a equals b, if we add the same number to both sides of the equation, the resulting equation will still be true. And we could also subtract c on both sides of the equation, and the result would also be true. The way we're going to use this principle is, the goal of solving an equation is to isolate the variable on one side of the equation. So what we're going to do is add or subtract numbers on both sides of the equation to isolate the variable. Let's take a look at our examples. Even though some of these equations, we can probably look at them and determine the solutions, we want to develop some skills that we can use to solve equations so when they get more complicated, we have good habits. So when we see an equation like this, we want an equivalent equation where we have x equals some number. So we don't want this minus 8 on the left side of the equation with the 8. The way we undo this minus 8 is perform the opposite operation, which would be to add 8 on both sides of the equation. So if we add 8 on both sides of the equation, remember this maintains equality. But on the left side, we have minus 8 plus 8. That would be 0. So we're left with x on the left side of the equation and we're left with 15 plus 8, which is equal to 23 on the right side. So our solution is x equals 23. So we solve this equation by adding 8 to both sides of the equation. On number 2, we have y plus 23 equals 41. And again, our goal is to have y on one side of the equation by itself or isolated. So we don't want this plus 23 here on the left side. So we can undo this plus 23 by performing the opposite operation or by subtracting 23 on both sides of the equation. So on the left side, plus 23 minus 23, that would be 0. So we have y on the left by itself equals 41 minus 23. We have 11 minus 3, that's 8. And 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. So y equals 18 is the solution to our equation. Now let's go ahead and try two more examples. And notice on these examples, the variables are on the right side of the equation. It doesn't matter which side of the equation the variable is on. As long as we isolate the variable, we will be solving the equation. So for this equation on the right side, 
we'd like to have x by itself or isolated and have some number on the left side of the equation. So we need to think to ourselves, we don't want this plus 9 here, so what can we do to undo plus 9? Well, we could subtract 9. We can do this as long as we do the same on the other side of the equal sign. So notice on the right side now, plus 9 minus 9, that would be 0. So we're left with x. And then on the left side, we have 43 minus 9, which would be 34. So now that we've solved for x, if we want, we can rewrite this as x equals 34 instead of 34 equals x. But either way, we have solved for x. And on number 4, notice on the right side we have y minus 15. But to solve this equation, we need to have y by itself, in this case on the right side, and then some number on the left. So we don't want this minus 15 here, so we'll perform the opposite operation on both sides, which would be plus 15. So minus 15 plus 15, that would be 0. We have the y isolated on the right side this time. And 23 plus 15 would be 38. So 38 equals y is equivalent to y equals 38, which is normally how you'll see the solution written. Now you notice how I solved all of these equations vertically, meaning I added or subtracted right underneath what I was trying to eliminate. Sometimes you'll see these types of equations solved horizontally, but of course the result is the same. Before we go, let's take a look at one word problem. If after writing a check for your rent in the amount of $650, the new account balance is $437, what was the beginning balance? So let's write an equation to model this situation and then solve the equation. So we know by writing a check, we would be subtracting $650 from the beginning account balance. And the result is a new balance of $437. So our equation would be x, where x is the beginning account balance, minus $650 must equal the ending balance of $437. So now by solving for x, we'll determine the beginning balance of this account. So we want x on the left side by itself or isolated and some number on the right side, and then we'd have our solution. So we don't want this minus 650 on the left side. So to undo this, we'll add 650 to both sides of the equation. This would be 0, so we have x equals, and now we need to find this sum, so we'll have 7, 8, and this would be 10. So the solution is $1,087. This would have been the beginning account balance before the check was written. I hope you found this lesson helpful.